my name is Kim Day and I'm a teacher at Manor Gardens Primary. Good morning everybody. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's session, we're going to be looking at creative writing. The aim of today's lesson is to have the children look at an excellent example of literature and particularly an introduction to a novel and to identify what grips a reader. What are some of the techniques that the children could use to get their readers hooked? As a writer, when you are reading, you're reading with a writer's eye. You're looking to see, hmm, how did the writer do that? What did the writer mean by that? We talk about noticings. So when you're reading as a writer, you're noticing certain things. And what we ask the children to do is to highlight every time they notice something, because they may not remember when they come back to it. It's such an instinctive, intuitive sense of, oh, it's a split second and it's gone. They hook by like including things that make you go, what was that? Let me just go back to that. Let me think about that. So by doing that, they make the reader interested and the reader wants to find out, so they'll carry on reading and that's how you find out if the author of a book is a good writer. So we start with the novel that I had identified for beautiful writing because when I read it, it moved me. If the old bell had been hanging in the steeple, it would have rung to announce midnight. Twelve solemn iron clongs, which would have woken the villagers from their sleep and startled any small creature new to the village and unaccustomed to the noise. Reading aloud requires something completely different to reading silently in your head. When we do it as a whole group like that, I take the responsibility for the read aloud and allow the children to just notice. After the whole group discussion, it's very useful to have children just speak to their partner. So after we had done the whole group, at a certain point, I ask them to turn to their partner and talk about their noticings. Often they confirm for each other, yeah, I noticed that too, that was really interesting. What do you think it is? Then from that full group, they break up into the individual groups and they actually apply what they've been talking about. And they take the stimulation and the inspiration of the group discussion back to their tables and they begin crafting their introduction and crafting their story. Well, so we did brainstorm and then we realized that most our ideas, we've got so many like good ideas, but they kind of not, put, they, they kind of, we just got our own ideas and they're kind of not pushing together. So at the moment, we just do it, we writing and ideas and phrases and a bit of our, our introductions um, just on our individually. And then just now we're gonna be reading each other and combining and seeing if it just works together naturally. Some of them will not know what they've got actually until they finish the crafting and then they'll look over it and they'll go, oh, that's something really good. Or they'll get stuck in deciding what is the actual thing that we're wanting to talk about here. What's the thing called the big scribble? Yes, we did that. And then we took ideas from each one and put them together. Everyone wrote what they think and then we're trying to put them all together to make one very meaningful introduction. Yeah. And we are we we had to restart and we had lots of other ideas, but we've managed to come together and we've really produced something that we're really happy with. Yeah. We're starting and now we're gonna start. And with everyone's ideas put in mind. Yeah. And yeah. we're gonna start now with our main story. Remember we're going to hear your final version of your story later on once it's complete. So you don't need to give us too much detail now. Just a quick touch in with what you've done. In the presence of what seemed to be a perfect day, the smells of freshly baked bread filled the town. The sound of happiness and laughter was broken by a woman's ear-piercing scream as though a piece of the sky had fallen down. It fell, it shattered, it went silent. So as part of the writing process, this was just the introductory part. This was just the initial startup point. Um, from here, we will need to move into further development of that first draft. Ultimately, once they've done the drafting and they're happy with the piece of work that they've produced, then there's an editing process. After the editing process, there's lots of various ways that you can publish. We have a website for our school, so we can ask permission to publish on the website, which means typing it up. We are also gathering pieces of work from the grade sixes this year, and we are going to just photocopy and staple them into booklets. And so at the end of the year, every child in grade six is going to take that booklet home with them, and they will have examples of 
the writing that we've done this year because we write all the time. We could pin it up on boards, we could stick it in classroom windows for other people to read. And the most important thing, obviously, about publishing the children's work is that you have to ask their permission and ask them if it will be okay that their work is going to be read in a wider, in a wider context. And once they say yes, which they inevitably do, then that's also, it's such encouragement. It spurs them onto the next thing and the next thing. And from today, they may have found that they've got the beginnings of two or three or four different stories. If they're given the time to develop it, then they produce really amazing, amazing things. Mm -hmm.